in a publishing venture. It is called 21. It's an independent art publishing house launched last year in the UK. David Boy founded it with three friends. It aims to reach a wide audience by producing accessible books on the visual arts. Its first title, Blimey, is an irreverent account of the London contemporary art scene. Joining me now with David Boy to continue talking about art, one of its first authors, Matthew Collings, and three of its four partners. Karen Wright is editor of the art journal Modern Painters. London gallery owner Bernard Jacobson is here. And of course, David Boy continues with me. You introduce these people and tell me about this. I mean, how did all this come together? <laughs> Who wants to do Whoa. it? <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, you want to do it, Karen? I don't know. Okay, have a go at it. Okay. Um, Karen, I've known for 25 years. Uh, sorry, that's right. true. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she had a gallery. She came from America, um, opened a gallery in, in uh, Cambridge. And I thought she was miscast, and I thought she should be in publishing. So eventually, she got involved in Modern Painters with, uh, sadly, the person we launched it for, Peter Fuller, who was tragically killed. Right. Um, David came in much later, about five years ago. I, I mean, just sort of, I love for his company, I love his mind, I love the fact he we're on the same wavelength, basically. So he, he was brought in as well. And he was uh, brought in to do what? To do these well, interviews it, for the magazine or to it, do something? Advise, else? write, everything. I mean, it, it, just across the board. He formally joined our editorial board. And, and, oh, he's and on actually, the editorial, board. editorial board, <laughs> along with Lord Gowrie and other, uh, uh, Richard Vaughan, yeah. another very important, you know. We it, had him for a trial dinner. Do you yeah. remember? Yes, that's right, yes. yes. Oh, and yeah, then I had to pass the trial. And it was a trial of fire, yeah. And he survived it. And yeah. it was and, tough. Yeah. And, I mean, so, I mean, that was a very kind of heavy. I had to argue with Hilton Crowley. Yeah, it was a very heavy intellectual. My, uh, it was a kind of heavy intellectual team. That's a show I'd like to watch. Oh, it, it was great. It was, I loved it. Yeah, I, I loved him. Yeah. And it was this kind of I didn't want him to go. I could have yeah. argued all night. Well, it was all these kind of heavyweight people, oh, and uh, and uh, you know, and then David, and they said, well, uh, you know, he's a pop star, you know, and, and then they, you know, as the evening went on, it was like, oh, he's read a book or two. Oh, he knows the thing. And it slowly they're going, oh, we love him, and so eventually he he became part of the team. He's very much part of the team. How is this magazine different from any other? Well, basically, we want to get, if I may say, we're basically trying to get away from what's called, what I call art speak. It's basically meant to be just good reading, intelligent reading, so that it, it's not meant for just like the 200 people who care about art in the world, but actually thousands of people who care about art. Listen to this. David Bowie with Jeff Koons, William Boy, the story of Nat Tate, Brian Robertson on Robert Rauschenberg, uh, Martin Gayford on Frank Stella, Jed Pearl, Art in New York, Richard Wellheim, Kids of Survival, uh, Norbert Linton with Dora. Ashton, David Hockney, TV is dead. And Whoa, yeah. <laughs> Whoa well, well, David. Well, well, well. That's a little joke. I mean, <laughs> you don't deal with anything controversial. <laughs> and Rick yeah. Moody, Art After Art. So this is... Yeah, Rick Moody. I, that's, yeah. that's a terrific little article. Rick art did, After Art? R Rick came through. I mean, he's a, a wonderful writer, and uh, I was uh, so happy that he came through with such a nice article. So, so, one, so one of the other big things we, we wanted to do uh, from the very, very beginning was to try and get real writers involved. You know, novelists, playwrights. And there's been a very heavy emphasis on that. People like uh, Julian Barnes, um, Jay McInerney is writing on the next issue. It's, What's it's he writing on? Karen? You, you say it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's okay to say Fonseca. <laughs> Fonseca. Well, it's called Fonseca. Um, you're having very pronunciation by. on the way down. And uh, it's somebody I wasn't very familiar with. He's about to have a show here in New York yes. next month. Oh, I know who he is. Yeah. yeah, I don't yeah. Know. So he's writing a piece about him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's, it's very much a kind of a mix of people who are kind of, you know, interested in the arts. I think uh, the, another thing we're trying to do is that, as you notice, there are a lot of writers who are not primarily known for being involved in the visual arts. I think the idea is that an, an opinion is a very valuable thing, and if it's well put and there's some kind of uh, um, brain power behind it, that whatever that opinion is on, it's worth having. And I feel that, personally, that it doesn't necessarily have to just fall into the laps of the art world to write about art, you know. Well, well no, 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 don't, don't. I think yeah. that's a pretty good idea. I mean, it, exactly. basically, that's the essence of what you're saying, yeah, yeah. is that we don't just want to leave art to those who traditionally inhabit the art world. Yes. Yeah, I most art magazines are kind of house, uh, kind of trade journals. Yeah. You know, like, like, yes. Trade yeah. journals about cars or houses or mm. uh, hoovers or something. Most art mag magazines are so narrow in the way that they talk about art that it can really only be read by ultra professionals. So if I put art, art in America next to your m magazine, you would know the difference. Yes, absolutely. It's much more of a range of voices in this Here. Sort of range of tone and of voices. And much more yeah. voices. I don't want to 
say, much, much more voices outside of the traditional art world. Yes? That's yes, but traditional art uh, criticism. Criticism, world. right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. also, there are a lot of heavyweight mm -hmm. art academics writing for it as well. Okay. I mean, so it's a, it's a mix. It's, it's meant yeah. to touch you. And I must say, every issue, and then Matt teach Collins you. is the first. <laughs> Matt Collins' diary is the first piece read by whoever it is. Now, how good is <laughs> Bowie as an interviewer? He's excellent. He is. He's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's brilliant. He's getting better. I'm getting the, better. I, I touch the parts of the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you raise the questions they don't want to talk about. Mm. Uh, yeah, he does. I do yeah. come yes, back to Keynes. Yes, he's the best yeah. one with Keynes has ever been. I think. Why? Uh, fantastic insight into Keynes' character, but great affection yeah. for him. Very great sympathy for him, but not sort of letting him get away with anything where <laughs> he might say something you can't understand what he's saying, he keeps probing and picking. I'm quite fan-like in that way, and I've learned a lot from my fans, because I find that the ones who really are into my work really pull me apart, you know, they really have a go at me, and uh, they're, they, they're not kind of fawning at all, and I, I felt that, well, that's kind of how I feel. I really want to know about my favourite artists and what makes them, what makes you tick? Jeff. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if I quite got the tick-tock, but I certainly felt that he was very generous with his time and allowed me to maybe get nearer to possibly what he's all about than maybe others have done, because he's really great. He's a great American artist. Well, th I think the point's well taken. It is this notion that, that the people who, th this is a fandom idea, you know, the best critics I know genuinely love the art or the performing art that they write about. The oh, best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They love it. Yeah, yeah you they get care off about on their it. passion yeah. when you read them. And, and that's and what they may be the most critical, in. but they're brought there by genuine love and not a cynicism. Yes, that's yeah. right. right. Yeah. They're right. crusaders. It's, it's easy to be nasty, yeah. but it's right. much harder cynicism to be Cynicism makes a lot more money. That's why it's yeah. so popular. Exactly. It's unfortunately real, so. It's a real great it's, it's a career easier. opportunity. Yeah, it is easier. It's a lucrative one. And sometimes and unfortunately it's become identified even in my profession with talent. Mm. And it's not talent. Mm. Um, cynicism I, is passe. We're going back into an age of romanticism. Watch. <laughs> but I think the other thing we did with the magazine and it's in these interviews is give people space to write. Art magazines always have very short articles and we've given people length and the interviews length and they make them very special by having length yes. to develop and yeah. length to grow. Take me from this magazine now to 21, which is publishing. Mm. What looks like by me. Matt, Matt was typical of a person who was writing for the magazine, whose um, diaries were getting better and better, who has a long association with the magazine from being a proofreader in day one yeah. <laughs> to oh, writing. Yeah. He was a wonderful proofreader. We didn't have yeah. so many mistakes. In the but what, why a publishing <laughs> company? <laughs> I'm going into I think going it's a into. True, I think it's, it's a, true a true extension. extension of the it's, it, it just comes straight out of the magazine. You know, let's have books. I mean, the magazine is great when it comes out four times a year. Let's have books on the same subject. There's so many books that haven't been published. That it's an be published. art publishing company, isn't it? Not, yeah. not just a publishing company. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just on art. It's the same aims yeah. for the magazine are the aims for the publishing. Yeah, company. but it, yeah, it, it, I think it, 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 yeah, we get so full of rain to the idea that we can widen the spectrum. I think yeah. that's yeah. what we felt that we could do with a book publishing company. That we may find uh, find that there, there were going to be certain parameters with the magazine that we possibly in the future wouldn't actually be able to mm. do much about. But I think that the, the few of us got together and, and, and thought, well, let's have a book publishing company of our dreams that really, it starts from day one with nothing and we can just go and build it and it'll almost build itself with our own yeah. quite diverse interests. Yeah. Um, mm. we, we're not all in agreement about everything, which no. the, the amount of uh, friction that that causes is just the right amount of friction that makes a publishing company something of interest and is vibrant and has a resonance. You know. but, but is there an operative idea that there's money to be made in art books? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 well, I think, uh, I think it's possible that, uh, you know, Maybe I'm an optimist. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, tell me about this. Blimey. It, this, is a, this is a look at the London art scene. Yeah. Pronounced as Dick Van Dyke would pronounce. <laughs> yeah, blimey. 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 It's a look at the, uh, the current London art scene, but allowing the story to go back a bit to uh, the 1950s and the time of Francis Bacon. Yeah. So the title is actually Blimey. Uh, from Bohemia to Britpop, That's right, it is, the London yeah. art world from Francis Bacon to Damien Hirst. So you, reading it, you get a very vivid picture of a living art world, the sights and smells it's of the jump from Francis real Bacon people. to Damien Hirst. Yeah, it's a jump, but yeah, actually they, they overlapped in time. And Francis Bacon saw some work by Damien Hirst, thought it was quite good. Is that right? It's not such a leap. So the 
the um, it's, it's a leap in type from you know painting to objects where you can hardly describe what they are. But maybe an attitude and mood, they're, they're maybe quite close. You meet Lucian Ford about halfway through. Yeah, you meet Lucian Ford. <laughs> you go around through me, you go, you're walking through the streets of London and you meet these artists and you hear about them. And it's a sort of mixture of my own uh, autobiography and meeting people and chatting to them and having encounters with them. And then through that thinking about the big ideas of art and the big moments of art, as, it, as they've occurred in London over the last uh, uh, 40 or 50 years or something. So it's neither wholly anecdotal and chatty, nor wholly um, uh, theoretical or academic. It's kind of a mixture of those things. Is there